Do you even open source, bruh? Let's take a look at the open source software that I use in my everyday life. What is up, YouTube? It's Ubu the Tech Guru coming straight at ya. How is everybody doing today? I'm doing fan tiddlyastic, and I'm I'm really sorry. I've been starting all my videos lately with an apology that I haven't been uploading content, and I I've just been so busy configuring my new Arch system, and we got the website going up. Uh, we got the podcast Linux Tech and Gaming. If you haven't checked it out yet, Linux Tag is the hashtag that we're using on Twitter. Um, me and Osiris and the Atomic Ass, you know, we've gotten a 15 episodes already of our podcast. Uh, it's going to be on iTunes. Uh, there's going to be an RSS feed for the audio, an RSS feed for the video, and an RSS feed for both. Um, I, I, shoot, I just that just slipped out. Uh, just ignore what you just heard. That... Um, We'll announce when the live when the website is live. Uh, we're just we're still getting everything set up. So, but you know, I wanted to bring you guys a video that showed free open source software in action, live use case scenarios. How do I utilize free open source software to do what I need to do? Um, and just this is a quick little thing because I'm not touching on gaming at all. But I mean, just check out this Steam library of mine. I mean, Linux Gaming for the win. There is 800 plus games in Steam Linux. So that's just a little, you know, a little food for thought right there. But what I wanted to talk about was I want to go over all of the open source software that I use to do what I need to do. The first software I want to touch on is called Myth TV. It is an open source DVR solution. So think of um, AT&T U-verse and think of it on steroids. <laughs> so for those of you that aren't aware, there is like some advanced functionality with AT&T U-verse. Um, DirecTV may have the functionality. Time Warner Cable may have the functionality. I don't know. I don't pay for that stuff. I use Myth TV. So one of the greatest features of Myth TV is its built-in web server, built-in access that I can connect to my DVR software from my from anywhere I have internet connection and set a recording. So you're probably like, yeah, right, I don't believe you. Well, I'll show you. So I will just go to my web server and I will show you. Here it is. So we look at all of my recorded programs that I have right now. We got some Resurrection, some Once Upon a Time, some American Horror Story, some family, Modern Family. Oh wait, I want to see the back end status. Check out the uh, what you know is the DVR recording anything right now? I have three encoders. You can see, so I could theoretically record two shows at once and play back one live with the ability to fast forward and rewind. Um, you can see the upcoming shows that are going to be recorded, you know, within the next two weeks. These are the next six shows. Um, you can see some general machine information like the disk usage. Right now there's two terabits of storage space for my DVR. Uh, it's, it's amongst two drives. You know, it shows their specific folder locations and whatnot. So, you know, <laughs> here's the listings. You can see all of the TV information for uh, basically uh, the channel lineup for my area where I live. So, you know, I can access this right here, what you're looking at, from my iPhone. Say I'm at the store, right? And, I, and all of a sudden, I see something out of the corner of my eye that reminds me that, you know, The Walking Dead, the last episode is going to be on in four minutes. And I'm like, oh, no. Like, I'm not going to be able to get home in time. Guess what? Boom. Go onto my iPhone, log onto the website, find Walking Dead, hit record. Boom. Done. Now I can continue on to the dairy section and grab my milk. That's why I love open source software. Myth TV, 
If you've never heard of it, go check it out. Awesome open source software solution for your DVR needs. Moving on, we're going to look at Crystal Buntu. That's actually the front end, what I use in my family room to play back those recordings. Now, I could use Myth TV front end, but unfortunately, the Myth TV front end um, does not have an installer for the original Apple TV. Now, yes, that is an original Apple TV. You're looking at 10 plus year old hardware right there. And yes, you can do full 1080p playback. You're probably like, what, Ubu, what? You're using 10-year-old hardware to play back 1080p content? Yes, I am. Check this thing out. This project is awesome, the Crystal Buntu project. It takes the power of the original Apple TV. You slap in a Broadcom Crystal HD decoder card, and you've got 1080p playback. Boom. Tough acting to actin. That's what I'm talking about. Apple TV supercharged. Crystal Ubuntu is an awesome piece of software. It basically takes Ubuntu 12.04, slaps XBMC right on top of it, boots into it directly, and you're looking at XBMC. And within XBMC, you have the Myth TV add-on, and that allows access to my recordings and my Myth TV backend server that's in the basement. So another great example of open source software for the win, baby. Um, and just a little side note, this device will be replaced in my environment, in my uh, home, because the Vero is on its way. Vero TV. If you haven't heard of it, go check it out. Link should be down in, in the description. Actually, a link to the video I did on the Vero TV will be in the description. Or even an annotation here, here, or here, somewhere on the screen, all right? So let's, go, let's look at the next open source solution that I use. Caden Live. Yes, this is my linear video editor. It is a QT-based uh, linear video editor that utilizes the Melt uh, multimedia framework. That's what does all the compositing and the overlaying and the cropping and all that kind of fancy stuff. And then it uses FFmpeg as its encoder to encode your final edits you know, into your final rendering in which that's what I upload to YouTube. Um, Caden Live is a solid project. It's been around for quite a while. Uh, you know, free open source software. <laughs> right now, the current version is, you know, solid. It's stable. I'm running it in Arch. I'm also running it in uh, Zubuntu 14.04.1. Great software. I highly recommend it. If you need a video editor for Linux, boom, Caden Live is the most feature rich linear video editor on Linux today. Moving along, we will take a look at. Uh, blah, 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 blah. we could look at Mumble. How about that? That's an open source software. So all of you people out there that like gaming on PC, but you want to be able to talk to your friends in game and say the microphone support in game just sucks. You know, the quality is horrible. You can't hear them and it's just, it's no good, right? Or say the scale is gigantic or say you want to talk to a friend that's not even in the same game as you. Well, I know a lot of you out there are using TeamSpeak you know, and you and you actually rent your servers. Well, guess what? You don't need to rent your server. Boom, right here, free open source software that you can install and run on your own. And here is a gigantic added bonus to Mumble. It actually adds ducking to your audio. Yes, that's what I said, ducking. So, for example, if I'm live streaming and I'm playing music in the background and, you know, when I talk, and I want the music to lower so that my voice is heard and there's no uh, overlap with the audio music, boom, Mumble will automatically duck the music, make my voice priority, and then once I'm done talking, we'll bring the music back up. That is one of the coolest features of Mumble right there is the ducking. So those are some of the open source, free open source tools and applications slash software that I use in my everyday life and I don't know what I would do without them you know I said goodbye to Windows and back in 2005 and I am loving Linux I this is a video to promote open source software 
to get everybody to see the advantages of open source software. I mean, I'm, I just showed you four great examples of open source software for particular problems, you know, that you need solved. These particular applications and tools can be used and they're free and they're open source. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, guys. Make sure if you're not subscribed that you subscribe for more videos. Um, you know, I have a wide variety of content, any, everything from game kind of tips in first person shooters like Borderlands or, you know, puzzle type games like Trine, um, co-op type games. I do little Ubuntu tips. I'm probably going to start doing some Arch tips. Um, I have a lot of great videos that are coming. So if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button now. Um, and you know, I also live stream all of my social media links are down below in the description of the video. You can find it all there. Easiest way to get a hold of me if you do want to contact me for whatever reason is going to be on Twitter um, up until our website goes live. And then, you know, I'll give out the email to the to you, where you can email me at. Um, but that's about all I got for today. So until next time, I'll smell you when I smell you. Ubu out.